this is where we are, Edgware Road, in the heart of London. And we are Edgware bound. We're going the whole length of the road from Marble Arch to Edgware. Quiet, isn't it? We're in the center of Marble Arch. And you know, this place is a fully equipped police station. I believe he's got absolutely everything except cells. And it's been a police station since 1851, when they moved the arch here from Buckingham Palace, which is about through my back there, through the sculpture, and a mile or two, well, about a mile away. And a hundred police can sit here. I should think, well, when the whole hundred are here, they're pretty well um, tightly packed, like this along these benches, ready to rush out there and there at the exits, should there be any trouble at Speaker's Corner over there in Hyde Park. So let's just go and look at the view of Hyde Park from Marble Arch, the police station. How beautiful the London air, how calm and unalarming this height above the archway where the prospects round are charming. Oh, come and take a stroll with me and do not fear to stumble. Great Cumberland, your place I see, I hear your traffic rumble. See Oxford Street on my left hand, a chasm full of shopping. Below us, traffic lights command the starting and the stopping. And on my right, the spacious park, so infinitely spacious, so pleasant when it isn't dark, but when it is, good gracious. What carriages below these skies came rolling by on Mondays? What church parades would greet the eyes here in Hyde Park on Sundays? And trodden by unheeding feet, a spot which memory hallows where Edgware Road meets Oxford Street, stood Tyburn's fearsome gallows. What martyrdoms this place has seen, what deeds much better undone, yet still the greatest crime has been the martyrdom of London. For here, where once were pleasant fields, and no one in a hurry, behold the harvest mammon yields, of speed and greed and worry. The rights of man, the rights of cash, the left, the right, the center. Come on, let's off and make a dash and meet it where we enter, the road that no one looks upon except as birds of passage. Oh, Edgware Road, be our abode and let us hear your message. Well, now we're really off, and we're going through that part of the Edgware Road, which everybody thinks is the Edgware Road, just faceless shops and flats. And the first place we're going to stop at seems to be nowhere.
pretty awful, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people think the whole of the Edgware Road is like this. Thank goodness it isn't quite as squalid as this is. Modern, clean lines, I suppose. That bridge over there with some other modern, clean lines cutting across it. And just here, do you remember what just used to be here? Yes. The other night, a loving couple caught in close to me. She was just turned 21, he was 83. The rain came down, they got no gamp. They both sat down, the grass was damp. He couldn't get up, he got the cramp. Pass in the time. I know exactly, I know exactly what you're saying to yourself. You're wrong. I know what you're saying. Oh, you, you wicked lot. You're the kind of people who get me a bad name. There's a funny thing. Now, this is a funny thing. I went home the other night. There's a funny thing. And I went in the back way, through the kitchen, through the dining room, the drawing room. And there's a fella standing there, not a stitch on. Can you imagine that, lady? There's your memory, girl. <laughs> he hasn't got a stitch up. I called the wife in. I said, who's this? She said, don't lose your temper, Miller. Don't go raving mad. I said, I'm only asking a fair question. Who is it? She said, he's a nudist and he's coming to use a phone. There's a clever one from the wife, eh? <laughs> So tonight, I'm, I'm going to do for you something entirely different. I'm going to do a monologue. Where I'm standing was the Metropolitan Theatre of Variety. Do you remember everybody famous used to come here? Dan Leno, Max Miller, Mari Lloyd. And look, I mean, it almost makes you like planning, doesn't it, for the lack of it there is here. Look, they put a car park on the site. They needn't have taken it down at all. And if we think our own age is pretty terrible, well, there's some earlier stuff just along here that you might like to see that shows things weren't too good in the last century. Improved Industrial Dwellings, 1884. That's where I'm standing. An improvement on what, I wonder? I think they probably thought it was an improvement on the little old London house. And you've got here the whole history of London in one view. There's the little house with its chimney pots. That's what they were replacing with these improved industrial dwellings, the beginning of flats, the beginning of the end of street life, and over there on the horizon, a still greater inhumanity, the tall towers, and not a tree and no grass anywhere. Ah, what a change. Breadth, leafiness, Space down there, Paddington with Little Venice, where arts and high society mingle, and Kinross Gardens slopes down to the canal, and here a charming villa, like an English spa, like something in Cheltenham. You see where we are, Maida Vale, named after the Battle of Maida. That'd be in the 1840s or 50s. But the traffic, you know, I've got so to dislike lorries that I bought a little book which tells me the names of them. And it's the one way to get to like them, picking out these names and then looking for them, a Euclid, an Atkinson, a Seddon, endless different types with different names to them of an exciting kind, a dumper crup. And all the time, the traffic goes on and on and on.
Ho for the Kilburn High Road, ho for a sumptuous feast. It's your road and it's my road, and Ireland meets the east. Let's mount the 16 bus with care. It's empty, wide and free. It will take us out of everywhere to the days that used to be. Forget the littered pavements, the chain stores row on row, and the super, super cinema where our parents used to go. With shoot up hill before us, we leave the hemmed in town raise a country chorus to Cricklewood and the Crown. There stood a village marketplace where now you buy your yams and I like in memory to trace the red electric trams. However far their journeys made, they always waited here and in this terracotta shade their passengers drank beer. The sisters, progress and destruction, dwell where rural Middlesex once cast her spell. Dear vanished county of such prosperous farms, where now are gone your weather boarded charms? Still in my dreams I see your sudden hills, your willowy brooks and winding lanes and rills, the red brick Georgian mansion, garden wall, the little church, the spreading cedar tall. See the Welsh harp with undulating shore, and here beyond the road's arterial roar. Your swinging signboards, barns with curly tiles, your little lakes on which the sunset smiles. Keats and Lee Hunt, in better lines than these, have praised your misty fields and towering trees. Constable's brush, with light and liquid fire, immortalized this unforgotten shire. Dear Middlesex, Dear vanished country friend, your neighbour London killed you in the end. Are you the caretaker? I am. Yeah? How long has it been uh, built, this place? Uh, 11 months completely. Do, and, and every now and then people come and yes, think they'll take yes. it. Do you feel lonely? No, sir, not at all. It's, it's, uh, it's so vast. Yes, it is vast. But, uh, we get plenty of traffic going by all day, you're not lonely. Do you sleep at night no, here? Sir, no, sir, no. That would be very frightening. Or would be right. No, I don't think so, no. Well, I think it's very brave of you, staying here all, mm. all, all through the day, nobody about. You get uh, quite a few people coming in. Do you ever get... You in the yes. building, though? Do you ever get vandals coming and trying to smash things? Uh, yes, well, I have had uh, a few turfs thrown up when I was laid. Not more. Not oh, more, no. no. That's good. I must say it's rather a fine... The views it's from the top must be marvellous. It would be a very good place to have an office, if one could get here. If you live round, do you live round here? Yes, yes, ten minutes from... Where? Burnt Oak. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. I know, I love it down there. And there's still bits of country there. Oh, yes, quite a good place. Can one get a view uh, of the country from if one goes upstairs? On the roof, yes. All, all well, the lift's working. Yes, sir. I think I'll go across that. Yes, you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. One after one rise these empty consecutives. Now we have come to the uppermost floor. Where in the car park are jags of executives? Where, far behind them, the bikes of the poor? 
Ghosts of the future are waiting to settle here. Click of the typewriter, buzz from the boss. The tea trolleys tinkle and hiss of the kettle here. Hurry up, Myrtle, he's ever so cross. Pig troughs of light will hang down from the ceiling. Holiday postcards this bareness adorn. Brave indoor plants give a tropical feeling. Eyes will look lovingly, hearts will be torn. Somewhere they'll raise, where the views are extensive. Beige, pink and soundproof, a partition wall. At fine figured walnut, on leather expensive. Here may be sitting the top man of all. And you see there's still quite a lot of country. Over there in the distance, Mill Hill, and this great green flat stretch in the foreground. Well, do you remember those air pageants of 1927, that famous air pageant? That's Hendon Aerodrome, shades of grey and white. That was long before London Airport was even thought of, and when Peter Macefield was just a little kiddie. And then nearer, do you see those elm trees? There is a river, the Silk Stream, a tributary of the River Brent, one of Middlesex's chief rivers. Let's go down and see it. Middlesex. You know, the air out here really is like the country. It's extraordinarily fresh. It's like coming to Brighton. Out here near Edgware, and behind there is one of the rivers of Middlesex, the Tiber of Middlesex, you might call it, which flows into the Brent and the Welsh Harp. It looks like the Tiber here, because it's narrow, shallow, swift flowing. And ahead there, where they're playing games, and you can hear the noises of children, that's the country of Keats, little hills, elms, Hampstead not far away down there, and Barnet and Mill Hill over there, and that railway there leads to the end of the line from Burnt Oak, the underground, last stop, Edgware. Marble Arch and the police station inside it. The site of the old Metropolitan Music Hall, Palace of Varieties. Then Maida Vale, Maida Vale, exclusive Maida Vale. Kilburn High Street, Cricklewood, the Welsh Harp, Merritt House, the Silk Stream, and now Edgware, a Middlesex small town that was.
This is the parish church of St. Lawrence, Little Stanmore, which is the west half of Edgware. And this church must have been the one in which Handel played, because he was chapel organist to the Duke of Shandos, who had an enormous house, Cannons, outside there, which has now been pulled down. And the organ here, that organ there, must have been Handel's organ. He must have played here, anyhow. And now, How long have you been verger here, Mr. Holness? Uh, I've been my 57th year. Have you any recollections of special visitors to St. Lawrence's? Yes, I uh, remember once when Sir Arthur Conador came to the church. He brought five ladies to see the organ, and I was showing them round, and I showed them the organ, and I was explaining to them about the keyboard, when one of the ladies, all of a sudden, she genuflected to the organ. And she says, fancy, Sir Arthur, she said, the spirit of Handel hovering around here. Well, I cocked up my ears. I thought, Sir Arthur, of course, that's Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So I said, oh, is that so, sir? She says, Sir Arthur's often spoken to the spirits. I says, is that so, sir? I says, look, sir, if you can get in touch with George Freddie Candle's spirit and ask him what he'd done when he was... Uh, music master to the Duke of Shandos. I believe in spiritualism evermore. So I said to the lady, I said, you lift up that stool, madam. She tried to lift the stool up because she couldn't. And this is what happened. You listen. Hello, what do you want? Oh, it's all right, Jim, you're doing your job all right. All right, good day. But you should have seen their faces. But I've never heard any more, and I'm still waiting to hear whether Sir Arthur has got on to in touch with the spirits. Of course, that was a trick of television. I can't play a note, organ or piano. <laughs> 